Did you ever cheat at anything? Have you ever cheated at anything? I cheat in training because like... Oh no, are you the ones that start a run earlier before the... No, not not with fitness. I mean like in games, like I just start making up rules as I go just so I oh, win. Okay, <laughs> like it's one touch. I hate losing. <laughs> you said it's one touch and the manager's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you're good at that. Yeah, I make up rules. Yeah, I, I remember That's that. That's smart. I think yeah. you're on the spot to be fair. Since retiring, I do CrossFit. Sometimes I skip reps. <laughs> I just can't That like, doesn't sound on. like you, is it? I know. But I skipped the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is three players in a podcast. Three topics, three players, and hopefully a podcast out the other end of it. We're in the middle of a special, uh, which is handy because we're doing midfielders this week. If you missed last week's episode, which you probably didn't, hence why you're probably listening to this one, we talk defenders and our top three, which is what we'll find in midfielders as well. We've only got, no January sales for us, the best in the business with us, Gabby, George. I, I, I'm still trying to make that chant work. Is there another one that they chant at you? No, you got to sing on the last part. Singer again, yeah. Yeah, I know, but I'm going for another chant. We can move chants if forward. If you can sing them, no. Gabby's. Yeah. Um, no, I, I ain't got. I think that's going spectacularly well. Uh, Gabby George, <laughs> Manchester United, England's finest, is with us. Jen Beatty and Izzy Christensen. Right, midfielders. Izzy, potentially, this is where you should come into your own. <laughs> potentially. Uh, let's go for your five that you've got, then we'll whittle it down like we did in the last one to Bardsley, Bronze and Bright. Can we go for alliteration this time round? Who are your five midfielders, Izzy Christensen, that you would like to argue over? Um, I did go to the Scottish national team website for a couple of my players. Right. Is this Caroline Weir. Oh, nice. You didn't know them before going to the Scottish... No, I hadn't heard of them. Right, no. okay, good. No, Caroline but I Wynn. Googled them and then YouTube some of their clips and they looked decent, so... Um, Technology's brilliant, because where brilliant. would we have been 10 years ago? I know, and then there was this girl that came up on YouTube called Kim Little. Right. <laughs> and she looked quite good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll save the explanation for a minute. The way you pronounce her last name is a little. little. <laughs> like, she's never said it. No, well, I don't know her. Little? I don't know her. Um, oh, like Little, that. yeah. Mm. We then moved away from the Scottish national team website to <laughs> G So Young. Right. So a big difference there. Yeah. And then we're back onto the England website for Kira Walsh. Yeah. And then we're staying on the England website for Frank Kirby. Frank Kirby. As a 10 in the midfield before anyone even, you know, says she's a forward. There you go. Nice. So I'm going to say she's a forward. <gasps> <Anyway>. oh. <laughs> Does See, this mean... is why we got on at football, right? I had so much respect for Gabs, mm. right? Because she'd say what she thinks. And she was that person you needed to sort of, you know... Tell you you're wrong. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Challenge. Anyway. Gabby, tell her she's wrong then. Who have you gone for for your, for your midfielders of all time in the <laughs> no, WSL? I actually can't say that she's wrong because I've got Kim Little. Nice. G. Oh. Kazware. Yeah. And then I had Farrah Williams. <sighs> Have you just gone for four? Uh, um, and Izzy Christian. So Wait, <laughs> get in. How, how, how are we saying that last name? Uh, Idol. Right, okay. <laughs> Good. We've got some crossover then. Jen, are you going to spoil the party? Kelly Smith. Ooh. Kim. Um, <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. As, a <laughs> as a midfielder. Yeah. Challenge? Challenged. Uh, as a forward? Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Fair. Ooh. Did you play 10, no? Yeah. But she played up front against me once and pulled my pants Everyone down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying forward. <laughs> Done. I'm with you. That's <laughs> hard to believe. Uh, Kim Little. You've had her twice now. Have I? Yeah. G. Yep. I went Soph Ingle. Oh. And Anita Asante. Because she played midfield like back in the day. Nice. As a six. So we're all agreeing on Little and G. So they automatically advance to the finals. Smith, the like, top. Come on. Three. I put her in my forward, so... Oh, wow. We've Just got a real contrast of styles going on here, philosophies. Only because of my um, personal experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I'm saying she is a forward. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, I mean, Kelly has to be in there, whether it's a midfielder or a forward then. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So easily led. So you're saying not we can rule her out midfield? We can put her into midfield. Why, why would you have her in midfield? Because she was, she was 
why would I have her in midfield? Because she was an out and out ten back in the day, and she was unplayable. Like, if you talk to anyone who's pay- played in that era of football, Kelly Smith is your number one. Or even when you're just coming through the ranks as a kid, you looked up to Kelly Smith. Is she or is she not a forwards coach at Arsenal right now? She's a forwards coach. Okay, end of debate. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 1-0. Wow. You can have her in strikers in a minute. Um, Caroline Weir, why does she get in for you? I don't think it's even a debate. Um, when I YouTubed her clips, <laughs> she, yeah, she's got a good left foot. Um, I, I just, I honestly, I, I, I feel very strongly about this, actually. How she is not in that list of Ballon d'Or nominees, I don't know. Mm. Um, for last season possibly the season before and I guess it's probably like Gab said about yeah. Katie McCabe it's, tough. it's the international level mm. um, that Scotland haven't you know done well in a major tournament that needs to be looked at though because you can't rule out players just because they're not like on a yeah. like successful playing at major tournaments every summer because it's yeah. just it's not a it's not a fair outlet is it because I, I totally agree Kylan you sh- we should be up in that in that list of Ballon d'Or nominees um, sorry Gabs but that goal she scored in the derby I know you went at Man United at that point Insane. but the the little touch and the dink over like the chip and whatever. Don't I say do dink because it's my vocabulary, but some people might not know what dink is. It's just like a chip, isn't it? Um, that that goal is unbelievable. Oh, she didn't. She didn't even do it once. She's done it twice as well. Yeah. Like, I tried to practice it once. A joke. Mm. <laughs> she is outrageous. I feel like her ability to do things like you haven't seen in women's football. I don't think personally. Would she have scored that goal if Gabs was playing for United at that point? I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not actually sure about that. But still, Caroline is a fantastic player. International. I mean, what's she like as a as a teammate? Uh, quiet. Just goes about her business. She's not a very like vocal, um, like extrovert. She's quite an introvert. Um, just kind of super focused, but also hilarious. Like when she like her sense of humor, like. She has everyone in stitches, to be honest. Um, but no, what I love about Kaz is she's kind of, when you look at her early career, she had some some tough moments. Like Pedro put her out on loan when she went to Arsenal as a kid and she's kind of developed. And then when she hit mid-20s and started performing at City, she was untouchable. She was one of the best, best midfielders in the world and still is. I know we're all a little bit gutted anyway that um, Great Britain's not going to be at, at the Olympics. And I know she was injured anyway. So, But, but that was always one of the things to see that blend of players together at an international level because not to you know be disrespectful to Scotland but you haven't always not you personally but you haven't always achieved those levels and it would have been great to have seen her yeah and and you know what it's actually interesting because when you say about the Olympics and GB or England failing to qualify for next summer in Paris um when I was watching the game the Nations League game uh with Scotland England v Scotland I was thinking like I Casway, obviously, I don't, I don't think she would have made the Olympics no. with the time scale of her injury. But I also would have liked to see Erin Cuthbert in the Olympic squad. And, you know, you're looking at some of these Scottish players. Jen, obviously, of course, I know you've retired from international football. But, um, you know, Rachel Corsi, you know, you've got four and possibly a couple more. Claire Emsley, maybe, if she had a bit of form. Players who should and could have knocked on the door of that Olympic squad. Um and I would love to have seen her in Cuthbert. And she's close. She was on the fringes of my WSL midfielders all-time list. Um, I feel, still think she can still kick on a bit in the next couple of years. But I, I, I think that I would have loved to have seen Kaz and Erin, obviously, if they're both fit and ready to go in the Olympic squad. I agree. Yeah, Good. Uh, talking of another player that could have made that, Sophie Ingle, who you've yeah. stuck in. It just, like, always seems consistent. Yeah. I think for me, Soph, she just does the basics unbelievably well. She rarely loses the ball. And I think I've I've never played with Soph, but I'd imagine if she's what she's one of those players that you don't know how good she is until you play with her. And I think that for me was Kira Walsh. And I thought you, you've got her on your list. But for me, when I watch Soph, she's so tidy on the ball. And she's kind of that pillar post of, of that Chelsea team and has been for so long. And she made the Olympic squad. Like people forget that. Like she with Wales, she similar story with Scotland. I hadn't played a major tournament, but she's in the GB squad, and I think that speaks volumes of of her her ability as a player. And I think yeah, she's done incredibly well at Chelsea. And for me, she had to be in the the top five all time. What's she like to play against? Yeah, like Jen said, I think she does the basics very well. Mm. Like it's probably not someone that you'd be 
frightened in terms of like one v one, but she dictates play very well, and that's what you need in a good team, like somebody that just can anchor, hold, and play the ball and keep it ticking over. I think she she doesn't necessarily play like the worldy passes, right? When you when you or get the goals, when you speak of like the Casweers, mm-hmm. the Frank Kirby's, they're the flair players. So it's not necessarily like that, but she does the basics, and it's that break up of play, kind of like a almost like a Jade Moore, mm-hmm. yeah, kind of that style of player, but. Um, yeah, so goes under noticed, I'd say, under the radar, like far She's, too much. Um, she scored some worldies as well. There was a left foot strike. I don't know if it was. That was against Arsenal. Yeah, but there was also right. one against City as well. I, I, I honestly can't remember how to look on true, YouTube. Actually. But like, she scored some absolute bangers as well. Like just arriving, and you can like see, you know, how much a player means to a team when you see the celebration mm. after they score. A player who doesn't normally score. Like when Sam Kerr, it's like, okay, yeah, she scored again, like standard. But when someone like Sophie Ingle scores, you can see the reaction of the teammates. Mm. And um, yeah, she's clearly a very well-liked player at club and country. Speaking of those that that don't usually score, you've put Izzy Christensen (laughs) (laughs) in your midfield. Was that just making the numbers up? No, No, I feel like Izzy has had a top career. There was... A period that city when there was the likes of G Stanway, Kara Welsh, Izzy, and I think that was a top midfielder. And there's arguments for all to be in there. I feel like, like we said earlier, in a few years' time, if Kara comes back, she'll be the first on the list. But I think obviously with her moving away and looking more at people that have been in the league and done it consistently for a number of years, that's more what I want on my list. Go on, Izzy. Yeah, I'll take that. Go on, Izzy. It's lovely to hear. What? What do you expect from a, a midfielder? So what does it take to be a midfielder in the, the WSL? Gosh, how long have we got? <laughs> I'll bore you with... Well, I'm just trying to drag this out for another 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't get that. No, I, I, honestly, I think that modern football, and you speak, we've spoken about Leah Williamson before, and even Sophie Ingle and, and what Jen and, and Gabs were saying about her role as that sort of anchor, number six, pivot, whatever you call it these days. She can also play centre-back as well. And I think... A midfielder these days needs to like know the role of every single player offensively because the amount of rotation that goes on on the pitch um, and what managers want and ask from players is, um, you know, a real high level of understanding of the game. And I, I always think midfield, no matter how much the game evolves, midfield is also about mostly about reading the game. Um, <clears throat> I think if players can pick up second balls, it's not a reason, you know, that it's. It's not a coincidence why they pick up second balls. It's because they're reading the game and that they're knowing when the ball's going to drop. They're knowing when to arrive into spaces to receive. And I think it's a real art, honestly. I think the midfield is, is a funny position and, and now taking a different look at it. You know, I'm, I'm watching football, analysing it all the time. And the role of a midfielder, I just think, is so simple, but it needs to be refined so much. Um, you, you've got to be technically incredible. You've got to be able to play off both feet. And I think one of the, one of the things I love, and, and Gabs would put me in that thing, but what I love doing in my career was arriving late in the box and scoring goals and being that extra player in the box. And I think that as easy as that looks when you watch it back, it's actually really difficult because it's the, it's the timing of the run and reading the play. And um, wingers now, they love to come inside and cut inside and cut back and cut back. And as a midfielder, you sort of, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. When are they going to deliver the ball? So it's just about reading the players. Um, Mark Skinner actually asked me at um, the United Media Day at the start of the season because Melvin Mallard come on loan from Leon, um, and I played with her at Leon. And he said to me, "How? Where would you play her?" And I said, "You know what? She can't play nine or either side. Like she's a forward, but it's who you play around her because it's who she finds that connections with to combine." And I think as a midfielder, you've got to read that and go, "Okay, what does she need? Where's her body shape?" I'll. I'll come into this space. No, I'll stay away from that space to allow her to do her thing. And that's what I'm talking about. It's just it's just reading the game. The best players do it, you know, brilliantly. As defenders then, what sort of midfielder do you want in front of you? Ball players. I think for, like, it's... To be fair, I'm, I'm looking at this list now and struggling to believe we didn't put the likes of, like, Kira Walsh, even Farah Williams in there, people that want to get on the ball. Still could, a, still could. Well, I, Kira's, Kira's in my list. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, like I just yeah, I just think as a centre back, the 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 dream is like midfielders who are constantly making angles to get on the ball because you want to play with the ball on the floor and play through lines and that kind of style of play. I don't think any centre back really wants to just be launching the ball forward into channels. Um, but I think just to touch on what Izzy was just saying, like 
midfielders' roles are so different from team to team. It's so adaptable and it's so it's definitely dependent on what full backs you've got, what centre backs you've got behind you, what wingers are playing in front of you. Like it's so complex midfield because you're literally at the centre of it. So it's it's so different based on what manager is giving the tactical stuff. From game to game, you might press different, you might build up different, and you just need to have a midfielder that can kind of pretty much do everything. Um, I always think the ones that can get out of pressure, mm. so say like the Leah Walties that can literally spin yeah. midfielders for fun if you just give the ball at their feet, no matter what pressure they've got from behind, that's a dream. Mm. Vic Pulova's kind of come into that that's role massively point. as well. Like she just, I've never seen, like I say Leah Walties a speciality at it, but then Vic Pulova's come into the frame and you give the ball to her and she's just spun someone for fun and all of a sudden you're you're going on the attack from off the back of your own box. So those midfielders are kind of my favourite and then the obvious ones that just read the game so well, break up play. Kim Little's your, my forte for that. She would just read everything down to a T. Um, is always making, if, if anyone makes an error, if anyone makes a mistake, it's kind of like she'll sort it. Do you know, do you know what's will. interesting, Gabs? I want to ask you actually because you've played centre-back and you've played left-back and obviously you've been in teams that play out from the back like do you see a midfield role as different in those two positions you've played no I feel like Jen said playing anywhere in the back line it's important to have midfield that want to get on the ball because I think now the game's developing and everyone wants to be a high pressing team but to get to the next level you've got to break that press so as like a fullback or a centre-back we can pass to break that but then I think it's the likes of the midfielders taking it in tight spaces and having the ability to break that press. Um, I think Kira has a lot of the attributes that we've discussed because she has the ability to get out of tight spaces and play simple, but she's also got amazing vision and mm. she's had that since young. I think that's my favourite thing as a centre-back as well because obviously you can see the whole pitch. You can see the whole picture. So when you've got midfielders in front of you that can not only see a pass that you didn't, execute it at the same time and that was Kira Walsh as well yeah. like she could see things that I hadn't even even spotted but yeah, yeah execute it and next thing we're on a goal scoring opportunity and that for me was always cool to watch from a back a back line someone sat on at the side you know watching you're right that's Kira Walsh looks like the ultimate player you'd want to have in front of you this is three players and a podcast Gabby George Izzy Christensen Jen Beattie we're talking about midfielders who you'd have in the WSL top three Let's make the case, Gabby, for Farrah Williams then. Yeah, I feel like when I was coming through, she was obviously probably towards the back end of her career. But I just think her ability to... She started to go a bit further back into like the holding mid role. And I think it was her ability to dictate play and make things happen. I feel like Farrah always wanted to make things happen, whether that be scoring or creating chances. And she always wants the ball. And her knowledge of the game was just phenomenal. Um, I think when I went... to the under 23 she was a coach there for a bit and someone that just knows the game inside and out and she can coach you for a game but also make things happen herself and I think that's what was so good about her and some of the goals that she scored were just outrageous. Mm. Range of passing for me. Mm. She was she came through at a time as well where I don't think the technical level of the game was obviously where it's at now but mm. she was there. She could do all range of passing. She was always tidy on the ball. Um, and always stood out for me from a technical ability massively. Anyone who takes a set piece with their so-called weaker foot yeah. deserves a mention. Yeah. She took a corner <laughs> with her left foot. I'd say a corner, she would take it on a regular yeah. basis just to provide that mad. in-swing. Um, that maybe there wasn't another left foot, a left foot on the team who had that same level of ability. And like mm. Jen said, spot on, you know, she was coming through at a time when, yeah, the technical aspects of the game hadn't, you know, increased. Um but yeah, anyway, Clarence leaves one as well. Takes a set piece for the yeah. left foot. Like, just crazy. You've got to have some self-confidence to do that. <laughs> We've only got one spot left. So either Farrah gets in or Fran Kirby gets in. Where's Kira in this yeah. equation? Well, no, uh, K- Kira potentially is there. I you think I want to go for Kira now. Yeah. We, we can chat because you said Fran Kirby. I did say Fran Kirby, yeah. But if we're, if we're going into a three. Kira for me over Fran what Close. talk talk to me about Fran Kirby first oh she's a joke you know like you talk it like I don't know where do you go with Fran like she's her ability it, it, that goal that she scored for Reading before she moved to Chelsea if if you watch it back the way that I think she received the ball on the half turn she flicked it around a defender and ran 30 yards and went and put the ball I think it was it against Chelsea 
I think it was against Chelsea. I'm going to have to look Is it up. Is that on YouTube? Have <laughs> <laughs> you seen it earlier? <laughs> I, I can't remember, but anyway, <laughs> this was the start of her, of Fran Kirby. She moved to Chelsea, and then the roles that she's played and the way that she's played, and I think in particular, her 9 and 10 partnership with Sam Kerr, it's, it's telepathic, it's like on par with um, Son and Kane at, at Spurs in that sort of, in the last few years, in that era, and um, yeah, just, just the combination of eye for a pass, technically brilliant the goals that she, she's probably one of the best players inside the six yard but you Wait found it, let's Jen. cross to our google correspondent <laughs> i'm just waiting for the that the ads to finish actually sorry <laughs> right here we go oh we get all oh, right i didn't realize we're actually watching one? the goal the chip one of many not that it was one the one where she it, i think it was at what was chelsea's old stadium called was it stains yeah, these plates stains yeah. yeah i think it was there oh this is a good goal um those those combinations does that shift things on whether you put a midfielder in so who they've been playing with up front like the the Kirby Kerr combination yeah to an extent um I feel like Fran has been phenomenal over the years mm. I think playing against her she's not a player that you want to come up against she's very technical and like you said she can see a pass but she can also finish so you have to get a lot tighter to players like Fran um but her ability to wriggle out is second to none as well um mm. so i think for me it was her sharpness of her runs yeah. they were just she she was gas when when she she had serious pace and it was her timing of her runs all of a sudden mm. you think you've got someone and they've just darted this run in a channel that you you didn't even see what was going to happen or her timing off to drop off to a back line into the space to pick up the ball as a midfielder in the 10 row mm. just her the the timing of that when she did that it was so hard to sort of follow with or or vice versa when she was doing the channel runs but yeah it was a sharpness and the speed that she ran at does run it i always think it's difficult as well when you've got a player with a sort of really low center of gravity yeah too just no shaking her off nightmare for height i tell you well, nightmare you, you, i mean you can do a little pat on the head and say thanks very much no but it's, it's true i think i always i preferred coming up against the pops or like julie fleeting at scotland you know what i mean like the tall taller in stature the Kim Littles and the Frank Kirby's that can just or G um, that low centre of gravity and can just like spin you or Vic Plover like what I was speaking about earlier the header that you scored in the Champions League semi-final last year was pop marking you at the Emirates yeah it was kind of second phase of a wide free kick so hopefully Alexandra Pop's listening and she remembers that yeah I Jen would so. much rather play against Pop than Frank oh, Kirby gosh. but I feel like the thing just also what you just said. with Fran is like she can create connections with so many different people that we have seen yeah. over the years with Sam Kerr, but she was doing that before. Mm. Um, so I think, like you said, a reading of the game must be on another level to be able to do that consistently with different players because Chelsea are always evolving, but Fran has always been at the centre of that. Yeah. That is spot on. Well, the only reason I was dragging that out is because I feel like you're all going to agree that actually Little, G and Walsh should be in there. Am I yeah. right in saying that? Yeah. Are we going for an order? Did we do an order for the defenders? We did. Bardsley, Bronze, Bright. Can I put Kim Little as number one? Can. Because I do believe it. Because again, she's not had the major tournament. If if Kim had played at major tournaments consistently, mm. she would have been Ballon d'Or, won all the individual accolades, but Team GB and one World Cup has been her only opportunity to be on that platform. But the way everyone speaks about her yeah. in the WSL, yeah. if you've played with her or played against, she's number one. That's what I was going to say. If you speak to anyone and you're discussing midfielders, Kim Little always comes up. Mm. So, yeah. No negotiable. Yeah, Kim at the top of the list. Absolutely. And then G or Walsh, who goes where? G second. Yeah. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to agree with <laughs> no, them. No, I agree. You're she going was on two my footed. List. <laughs> she, was, she was actually on your list. Yeah. You're right. All right. So, we are going for our top three midfielders in the WSL Little, G, and Walsh. To add to Barsley, Bronze and Bright, we're almost there. We'll bring you your attacking lineup next. And who knows, we might get some goalkeepers in that, such as the level of debate amongst these three. You can be in touch, you can be in touch, or you can get in touch. Either way, we'd love it. Hashtag 3PP on social media. Until next time, what a perfect partnership we have here. <laughs>